Mathematics and music are two disciplines which go hand in hand with one another. At least a lot of people like to say so. The reason why I'm making this video is to open up a discussion on just how deep this relationship really is, and also to provide one example of where mathematics can be applied to music. Perhaps a good place to start is by asking what is the level of standard that we have for a connection between mathematics and music to be meaningful. I have noticed here that mathematicians and musicians tend to disagree on this. For instance, when some musicians have somehow found the golden ratio instilled inside Beethoven's symphonies, I have seen mathematicians roll their eyes at this exact same result. So this means that the mathematicians have somehow quite a high standard, however I hold the argument that this is in fact a good thing. Let me explain. Mathematicians are sometimes asked the question, is mathematics invented or is it discovered? And the common answer to this is, well, the good stuff is discovered and the bad stuff is invented. But that's kind of an interesting answer, because you see these mathematicians have this idea of the good stuff and the bad stuff, but it's all mathematics, right? So what's the difference? You need to understand that mathematicians are studying universal truths. It's not meant to be that you create a theory and it kind of works and there is some relationship that you have constructed. Instead, it's meant to be the universe simply has this relationship and you have come along and you have found it. A classic example of this is constructing geometric objects from constructions that you can do to the octave or just notes on a piano. An example of this would be if you were to take an octave and you look at that as an x-axis and then you take another octave and you look at that as a y-axis, then you get a square of points and each point inside this plane is going to correspond to a two-note chord on the piano, okay? But you realise that octaves don't matter, so there's really a gluing of the endpoints of the x-axis, similarly for the y-axis, and so you end up with a torus. However, there's also an x-y symmetry, because if I were to play the interval a-b, that's the same as if I played the interval b-a, so it's not a torus, it's in fact a Mobius strip. And what's the point? Cool. I have somehow done something and constructed a Mobius strip from intervals. That's a relationship between the two of them. But I don't learn anything about the Mobius strip when I do that, and I don't learn anything about intervals when I do that. The way that this could become an interesting result is if there was somehow a geometric idea existing inside the Mobius strip which was reflected inside the concept of intervals. We know, for instance, that the Mobius strip is non-orientable. So what does it mean that the intervals are non-orientable? nothing much. Perhaps what I just said seems a little bit overly cynical. I want to make it clear that my opinion comes from a place of passion and not from a place of negativity. I am a believer. I do think that there will one day be a complex relationship between mathematics and music. I even hope to contribute towards a beautiful theory such as that. I'm just not entirely convinced that we're quite there yet. Hence why I'm making this video in order to generate some discussion and also to put my opinion out there. One thing which I don't doubt though is that there are many applications of mathematics to music. The one which I'm going to show you today is how the Chinese remainder theorem can be used to calculate polymeter. A polymeter on one hand is when two different instruments play two different time signatures at the same time and what I mean by calculating them is work out when they're going to play simultaneously. On the other hand, the Chinese remainder theorem tells us when certain systems of equations admit a unique solution. To state the Chinese remainder theorem, I need to recall some modular arithmetic. If z denotes the integers, which is just the whole numbers, negative 2, negative 1, 0, 1, 2, dot, 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 then z sub 5 denotes the integers with 5 set to 0. So this would just be the 5 numbers 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Uh, we write 3 plus 4 is equal to 2 mod 5, because it is. The Chinese remainder theorem is stated as follows. If p, q are integers with no common factors, then x equals a mod p and x equals b mod q admits a unique solution mod p, q. So, for example, if x was equal to 2 mod 5 and x was equal to 3 mod 7, then this has the unique solution x is equal to 17 mod 35. You can just check if that's true, and indeed it is. The proof of the Chinese remainder theorem is done like this. If we let p1 denote the inverse of p mod q, and if we let q1 denote the inverse of q mod p, which necessarily exist because p and q have no common factors, then we can explicitly calculate x as a multiplied by q1 multiplied by q plus b multiplied by p1 multiplied by p. So in order to relate this to music, I've loaded up a polymeter here. So we have two instruments, blue is the steel drum and orange is the clavinet. 
The steel drum is going to play in 5, and it's going to play every beat 2, and the clavinet is going to play in 7, and it's going to play every beat 3. So the steel drum playing in 5 every beat 2 sounds like this. And then the clavinet playing every beat 3 in 7 sounds like this. And then when I play them together, you'll see that they first synchronize at beat 17, which I'm highlighting here. That sounds like this. Moreover, you'll notice that this is the only time that they synchronize inside 35 bars. That's reflected by the fact that the Chinese remainder theorem tells you that there is not only a solution, but that that solution is unique. So that's it. Polymeters on one hand, the Chinese remainder theorem on the other. I don't claim that this is a particularly profound connection between the two, but hey, it's a very concrete one. Also, I'll mention that both sides generalize, and when they generalize, they generalize together. On the music side, you can imagine more instruments, more time signatures, and on the Chinese remainder theorem side, you can imagine more equations. Now what I would like to know is what you think. Does this simple result mean that there should be more applications of mathematics to music? Also, if there are more, should they always be relating to rhythm? Or could mathematics be applied to the study of melody or harmony as well? Or do you think that there are other interesting results that relate mathematics to music which already exist? If you do think so, please let me know in the comments. I'll definitely go through it, and if I think it's interesting and would make a good YouTube video, then I'll definitely make a video about it. My name is Will Trangani. I'm a mathematician musician. Uh, links to both my mathematics and my music will be found in the description. Your support goes a long way, so if you enjoyed this video, please do consider liking and subscribing. And if you find yourself in Melbourne sometime over the next few months, do consider coming to one of my Obdurant shows. I've got a lot lined up, and I'm excited to take this project as far as I can, whilst maintaining mathematics along the way. And lastly, if you are also an academic slash artist, then I want to hear from you. Please reach out to me in any way possible, and let me know how you strike this very difficult to achieve balance. And if you are interested, you can also follow me on Instagram and see how I'm trying to do the same. Alright, that's it. Thank you very much. I'll see you in the next video.